to all those mothers out there. This is part two of our salute to mothers with Serial Mom, starring Kathleen Turner, back in 1994. Shut the door. Welcome to the Dream Warrior Review. I'm Kurt Thomas. I'm Mick Strawn. This is episode 63. So, John Here Waters. We again. We're finally doing John you Waters. Son of a we didn't really say. Gun. Well, actually, that was a messy intro. So yeah, that was, that was yeah, a rehearsal. Well, it was. Yeah. So this time we're actually like getting. Oh, up. are we rolling this time? Yeah. Oh, that's so good. So I'm excited because we're finally doing a John Waters movie. Yes, and I and I said earlier that maybe it wasn't John Waters' best work, but you know, there you go. But I think uh, but, you have to look at different segments of his life. But then you have to think to yourself. Life. But then you have to think to yourself: Did John Waters ever do his best work? Well, look at his career. I mean, it started off with Divine doing those dirty, cheap movies in Baltimore. Yeah, and. Uh, yeah, but they I were. I think there's different segments of his career because you were have amazing. these amazing, weird, <laughs> yeah. avant-garde almost movies. Yeah, Pink Flamingos, and then you had Divine like at one point eating a, a dog turd off the the, the, the ground, yes, which is amazing because exactly. that was all impro- impro- improvisation, which or, is you know ver- people don't do nowadays. Yeah. They don't eat dog <laughs> anymore. Well, <laughs> But not they, nearly as much as they used I to. I think around hairspray. Well, technology is different. Digital yeah. dog poo. poo. Yeah, there you go. They <laughs> would do digital dog poo these days. Yeah, but 1988, sure. I think, is hairspray. When he when he did that movie, it was kind of he was starting to go a little bit cleaner, more mainstream. Yeah, right. L- probably less dirty stuff and everything. And he had Ricky Lake in his in his movies. Right. Yeah. Ricky Lake. Ricky Lake was in this one. This, this is which, the first... by the way, we're talking about Serial Mom. Yeah, we are talking. That's you know what we're finally it, there. We did it. We're here. Yes. So did you want to uh, hit hit the description of it? Yes. A sweet mother takes a little too much at heart for the defense of her family, which is, is weird because we just talked about yeah, Gabrielle know. Union protecting her family <laughs> and breaking family. in. Protecting her family. But That's this is right. totally different. This is completely different. For, for Who one said thing, I can't memorize lines? No. <laughs> there was something slightly unnecessary about a lot of this. Right. <laughs> but I love how it opened because it was... Uh, very clean and bright. Oh yeah, and it was June Cleaver. Oh yeah, with her it, family. It was, it, you know, you know what it was? It was black and white in color. Yes, and then you see the fly, and you know something's wrong. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, that's, yeah that's so uh, what I yeah. liked about this, it was very simple. <laughs> I mean, the plot was simple. The, right. the story was simple, but Kathleen Turner was amazing once <laughs> again. It was very much like the film in front of it. Very simple. Uh, a woman protecting her family and. Yeah. Uh, Resolved quickly and pretty straight ahead. Um, and people might have died. And people might have died. Actually, we can say this one's people out. Did this die. one came out in nineteen ninety six. We can say this people died in this one for yeah. sure. In both of them. Yeah. Nineteen ninety four, sorry, nineteen ninety four. Yeah. This is um But Kathleen <laughs> was, Turner was, was still pretty good looking there. Yeah. I, I've got a couple of things as I I want to read through some of my notes. Uh, <laughs> super colorful. Um, I love that Ted Bundy was in it. Did you not like how uh, Kathleen Turner did the dirty talk? Like the she just changed her voice. Yeah. <laughs> what year was this? That's what I kept writing like, down. Writing it. What? What? I'll what get year? you, face. Hmm. You know, one thing I did I did think about this is that Kathleen Turner talks walks like a guy. Yeah. I mean, completely like a guy in this, you know, just like, yeah, uh, there was, um, I kept, well, she so, changed. She, she's definitely evolved since uh, the eighties for sure. Yeah. It's amazing. The cast. I mean, I, I thought the cast was great. Matthew L- Lillard. I think he was in, I, he was in what, hardware. I think he was in hardware later on. Uh, I believe Mr. Thomas is referring to Hackers, a film that came out in 1995. He played the character Serial. 
but he was also in Scooby Doo. Right. <laughs> right. So I kept thinking about Scooby Doo. <laughs> but uh Ricky Lake, you know, of course he's always kind of funny. But right, right. The the dad was the perfect person. He, he was, was the perfect the, actor. Sam was, Water Sam uh, Sam Waterson. Yeah. yeah. Oh yeah. He plays amazing. like a perfect like straight guy to oh, her. He like, did, he, and he looks he, confused he, and kind he, of stupid half the time. Right, he does. And, <laughs> so, and it really worked for him. This is this is not um when he did lawyer stupid later on for Law and Order. Right, yeah. This is just dad stupid. Did you ever see The Man in the Moon? That's it was a really cheesy movie that I I actually yeah like. sure with um Andy Kaufman I or it had not no, no, Andy no. Kaufman no, I'm about about the Man on the Moon the it was a cheesy love spo- story with that blonde girl uh oh god what's her name the girl that was in uh there's a weird story about this one is I actually rented this from a movie store one time and I really liked it yeah and I kept it too long and I lost it and <laughs> the, the movie store was trying to charge me fifty dollars for it. <gasps> And then they went out of business, so I didn't have to pay. <laughs> so for you it. didn't have to pay it. Oh, well, there you <laughs> but, go. Uh, yeah, well, here it is. It's a coming of age story. See, it was uh, it was with uh, Reese Witherspoon. Oh, this barely. But it was set in the fifties. Well. But he played a dad, and he was very serious and strict. Okay. But he, I mean, I, when I saw him in this movie, I was like, oh my god, that's amazing! It's like it's perfect. It's perfect casting against this crazy yeah. Kathleen Turner character. Right. Thing. Oh yeah. It's, <laughs> it's like, <laughs> <laughs> well. Um, <laughs> and the names are hilarious, like Sutfin and Mr. Stubbins, and I think and I think they could have gone farther with that. But and there's I, uh, a sex scene where the kids are listening. That was amazing. <laughs> the, the, was yeah. There was there was another. Uh, there was another that's John set. Waters' humor right there. Oh yeah. Well, but how about how up. about the, how about watching the TV when the guy is. Uh, yeah, <laughs> yeah, wah, 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 wah. and he's watching uh, TV and and the. Well, this the, will tell you something about how the, much I like John Waters. The boobs were like, like, it was like a pair of pigs. So I had this on DVD and I couldn't find it. Right. So I had to rent it from Netflix. Right. But I, I had it on DVD and I remember watching the commentary with John Waters in the back talking about it. Oh, yeah? And I remember when in that sex scene he was talking about how uh, he said it was one of the first times that they actually allowed us like a masturbation to be shown in a movie. Oh, really? And they only got an R rating. <laughs> so they were really? shocked. They were actually surprised. <laughs> well, they said they were really nice to us because we didn't really have a lot of nudity. We just had a lot of violence and the M- uh, l- l- Let me tell you something, because uh, I sat back and and was involved in many many fights with the M- MPAA. I mean, just one after the other. I mean, Chainsaw uh, or, or Leatherface was an epic battle. But New Line Cinema, for some reason, they really targeted them. <laughs> they well, it, it is harder with them because um, it, you know we were like uh, doing stuff that was up on the edge on Nightmare on Elm Street three and four, and um, y- you know our battles went, you know, right up to the minute of release. And, and that was and about the time the that Frank Zappa was battling right exactly Kipper Gore, right? We, uh, right. We, er, everybody was like uh, going left and right at it, you know, for. Uh, Actually, I think this was around the time, 1994-ish, maybe 96, I'm thinking. But when when Frank Zappa went up against the to the Senate to talk about... Oh, with uh, Frank Zappa with D. Schneider? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Twisted what Sister. What a combo. That's a, that's a great... That, 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 that's just an amazing I used to love a twist, I have a Twisted Sister album I used to love playing with the beginnings. of like, Twisted Sister, come out and play. But I would play it, I would slow it down, and then I'd reverse it. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, I just... Yeah, what does I, it say in I, reverse? I did that when I was bored. Get me a 7-Eleven, <laughs> Serpy. I like all the, the references to all the, the serial killers, and I like all the ways that she killed people. It was pretty amazing. Oh, yeah. It was the, great. What do you do, what'd you think about the meat on the end of the, the fire poker? <laughs> in, in in the toilet? Yeah. yeah. In, in, in the bathroom? And she was, like, it? afraid to touch yeah, it because yeah. she's so, like... Ew, so petite and so... Yeah. Mm. So proper. Take that meat. And then she put her seatbelt on before she took off in the van. Of course she did that. <laughs> I love the one line, is 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 this... Honey, is this menopause? <laughs> And then I, she I love was, the, the classic though, the classic shot that reminded me that this was a John Waters was when the baby gets spit on. 
<laughs> oh, he said that he had trouble. That was another thing in the commentary. See, yeah. I, it's weird that I'm remembering certain things. Oh, okay. No, but he was talking about the church, and it was really hard to find some, a church that would let them do it. Oh, it's always a nightmare to find a and church that will let us do things in it. They were so upset about this one thing, and it was just the baby spinning, the baby. like <laughs> sneezing. It was even sneezing on somebody. <laughs> <laughs> That's all it was. <laughs> Well, when he spits on the baby, wasn't it in a market or something like that? Oh, it was hilarious! Oh man, and it, and it just looked—it just looked like, yeah, uh, uh, the way it was framed and everything was just. I think it was like, a real church, though. It was like, yeah, that's what it's. I, I don't remember for sure. I, yeah. I almost have to go back and listen to the commentary now again. But oh, I do remember something else. This is weird. Things are coming to my brain. I must have been hit on the head or something. Yeah, mm-hmm. but no, there, he paid seventy. I think it was seventy or eighty thousand dollars for the Annie. Um, song. Oh, really? Just for the rights of that. <laughs> and that was one of the best scenes. So thank God yeah, he paid yeah, for that. That's, that's true. I that's might true. be wrong how much he paid, but I mean, he paid a ton of money for that. Tomorrow. And the way, oh, she bypassed the knife. <laughs> Do you love that part? Oh, Where yeah, that's the knife right. That's, and she's like, and she oh. goes, mm, this isn't a knife thing. That's not going to work. No, 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 no. I need to hit him over the head with meat. Yeah, leg yeah, lamp. R- right, leg <laughs> lamp. I, I, that was, that was, <laughs> That was classic because you had to turn. Yeah, oh, a knife, really? Yeah, yeah really? Yeah. No, huh? too boring. Because because even even the people in the audience are going, oh come on, <laughs> this this is not a knife thing, you know. That's uh, and 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 once again, the knife goes back in sha- in, in shadows. The last show that we were. Yes. Right. It, there's all these connections. This is weird. So actually, you, we, did, we in, in, unintentionally did two Mother's Day sh- movies in a row. We did. Breaking oh, that's in. right. We did. Breaking In is yeah. another one. <laughs> well, did you catch this? I, I love the references to Texas Chainsaw Massacre and Bill Cosby. I thought that that was <laughs> particularly fitting. But <laughs> And that's weird because that was 1996. Right. But the greatest thing. Or 94. Thing, I keep the, getting the year wrong. The greatest thing in the whole movie was the sandwich. <laughs> when she's eating the sandwich and it has that green, that really weird, super hyper green spread on it. Right. And she's putting the spread on. Like it, really it, it, avocado. Oh, actually. no, no. It was like, it was so much brighter than cava, avocado. I was like, wow, what went on there? That was, an, that was a, a prop master's uh, in joke. I like when uh, Matthew Lillard's character said, mom's gone crazy. And then Sam Watterson, Watterson says, uh, your mother may have some problems. That's all. <laughs> that's all. And that was me while they're going some, into court. Some pro- oh, that's right. Yeah, some problems. And then I love the chase scene. It was. It reminded me of OJ. Like, <laughs> <laughs> where there, she was just driving to church. Just, yeah, just, uh, 12 like, hop cars yeah, behind that's, him. Yeah, that's right. And she just keeps going, just walks right out to her car, <laughs> takes everybody with her. How did you like the scissors? Where they she threw the scissors and they stuck in the wall? How'd they get that? How'd they do that? I mean, I was trying to figure that out. Like, because I don't think it was digitally done. No, I don't think so. so it's probably dropped. I've got to know. <laughs> dropped. Um, one thing that I was going to mention was um, the uh, <laughs> that little waltz step that she would do every once in a while. The little oh yeah, da, 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 da. she would make this turn <laughs> that kind of like. Hey, what and and out of nowhere because she really did walk like a boy yeah. and then she would like walk but then she would make a turn where she'd go around that way to come this way yes or she did that spin yeah yeah she yeah. did that little half a <laughs> little spin and it, it was it was just great because she was just like whoo whoo <laughs> and you gotta wonder if she came up on that on her own yeah that, like or if it, she was directed to kind of do that you know it that had a feeling you know as much as the spit. Sound it was uh, very much uh, John Waters. Uh, John Waters. Yeah. That move was very her. She did an excellent job of snapping too, like where she was just kind of nice and polite. yeah, right. And then, and then, she and then she'd go switch. evil and me. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> there was a, there was another thing that that I thought was really interesting. Uh, other than the band called the Camel Toes, the, uh, <laughs> <laughs> which actually was L Seven, because I remember when on the radio I used to play their songs. Sometimes. Oh yeah, yeah. So L Seven. I was wondering was the band. who who the band was. I mean, they, I was. Yeah. I guess they had a good sense of humor because they they had you know. I don't know what they had. Camel toes. I, yeah. that, were those artificial camel toes? Yeah, I, I hope so. I, I think there was some glue involved in that. I hope whatever so. was going on there. Um, but the thing that, we, that interested me is just from a props point of view is that when you're having to deal with a plastic knife, right, and you know that you're going to use a rubber knife 
or, or a series of retractable knives or something like that. And all those are plastic knives. And, and so what you do is the director always looks at them and goes, well, that doesn't, that doesn't look like the, the chrome of the knife, right? So if you want an argument that you want the chrome knife to be there for most of the time, which, by the way, is actually kind of important in a way, um, so that it sells the fake chrome that's on the plastic knife, unless you're really lazy, which is, which whoever did props on this, he was really lazy because <laughs> right. he painted the knife so that he wouldn't have an argument. Ah. The actual knife that she picks up, if you noticed, was had a real flat, oh yeah, ugly oh, surface I to didn't it. Didn't really think about it too yeah. much. Well, that's 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 the dichotomy of being a uh, of knowing that you were going to have to have a rubber knife. Later well, unlike on. our last episode where we talked about breaking in, do you think <laughs> they used the what kind of knives were they working with there? Because there were a lot of knives in this one. Well, you know the funny thing about it on that one. Uh, that was a case of where they were using the real knife uh, oh, primarily. Yeah. Like in the sheath and stuff. In, in the sheath and stuff. They were yeah. using the, and, and they only used the, uh, the, the other knives very sparingly, but they actually did have both of them. Because you can tell, the, you can really tell the difference. Huh. I mean, that, that was obvious because there was a badass glint to it. And you cannot get a badass glint right. to a rubber knife. It just will not and That's happen. why you're here, because I don't obsess over things like that, so I need your eye. Oh, I don't obsess over anything, <laughs> Jesus Christ. I mean, I, I'd obsess over a band that, you know, was all camel toes, but... Um, Oh, I want to know. There was a weird scene that I did. I, want to, I wish I could ask John Waters what why he did what he was thinking with this scene. But there was a scene where Scotty goes home, and his parents are just eating in the other room. Like Scotty's not there. Yeah. And like, wouldn't they have him at dinner with him? Or it's that like, would, why is he in the room? Little, go masturbating. Yeah. It's, it, yeah. So that it, didn't make any sense to me. But that, but oddly enough, that to me seemed very John Waters. Yeah. You know that that the parents are just ignoring the kids and. Yeah. Right, it's, it's 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 like that. Well, I want I want to get him in the room, and the real reason I even want him in the room is to show that piece of footage yeah. with with the boobs. Well, I guess because he, that's funny. I guess he could have gone through the window, and his parents probably didn't know he was there. I guess that's what I was thinking, but whatever. Anyway, but yeah, you're right. They had to get him in there. Yeah, but that yeah. was a good scene, though. Yeah. So uh, th- with the brightness and all the rest of that, uh, you you know, uh, how many rubber knives would Straight up, would you say this was? Oh boy! See, I'm I pre- I'm trying not to be too generous because I just you like tend Bob to be Waters. a little bit generous. Yeah, the yeah, just because like. you like yeah. him. So out of five, I mean, this is the second probably well, not the second time, probably like eighth time I've seen it. But I remember when I used to watch it before, I was looking at it in a different way, and it was years ago. So I probably would rate it lower than I would years ago. So years ago, I probably would have given it like a four, four out of five. So I'm really? like maybe a good 3.5, a strong 3.5, just because yeah. I was really entertained by it, and I actually kind of liked the way that it was really bright and happy looking. I I um I kind of like don't necessarily love this period of um of John Waters. I like his early stuff. Um, I I think I'm not going to say that he's sold out because it's not even possible well I, but, I felt like i lost okay so i was a john waters fan my brother knew that and he bought me pecker mm-hmm. which i liked it was okay right but then i watched uh what was it called uh cecil b demented and i was just like eh, okay i lost interest there. right right so okay. i kind of fell off there for a I, while I, I can understand so i haven't really seen a lot of his recent stuff so. yeah well i haven't i haven't seen i you know um hairspray was not you know one oh, of my oh, favorites sure. but uh that's weird um yeah in all honesty, I think I would uh, probably go. Crybaby uh, was good, so I think maybe I lost three, interest. Three point one. Cecil B. Demented. Yeah. Three point three point one. Uh, three point one badly painted rubber knives. So I would say watch this, but then go back <laughs> and watch Pink Flamingos. Oh, you, you have to or watch Female one of Trouble. <laughs> oh, Female Trouble. Yeah, no, I would go. Yeah. Mondo Trasho. See, I I remember all these early ones that were scary. I actually remember watching this one. Mondo Trash. Oh yeah, the, now those are scary films. Yeah, yeah, the, the, those are, yeah, divine. Just oh, and I do have one thing to say about him. Oh. so this is very clear in this movie, independent movie, probably not a huge budget, mm-hmm. but everything looked and sound amazing. I was thinking about Tyler Perry. 
how he's right. been doing it for a long time, just like John Waters had at this point. But I have to tell you, now here's one thing. And if about, you see the early John Waters, he learned a lot along the way. <laughs> well, but but also this is is New Line Cinema uh, had a tendency to really put together good crews. I mean, they would pay a little, maybe pay a little bit more. Um, we were in house for the longest time. I mean, up until like '93 or so. Uh, uh, you know, he had just amazing, you know, go to people. That that you know they they expected a certain you know uh, degree that they weren't paying for, <laughs> right? Of course. <laughs> but um, so did you ever have any run-ins with the? Uh, I did. John Waters. I did. Story time. Story time. It's story time with Mick. 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 I, I had a, I had a, um, I did some of the, uh, rework stuff for a uh, hairspray and, um, and I had one of the finest production meetings of my life with, um, John Waters. He was hilarious and he was so acerbic and, and, <laughs> uh, and, 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 and the great thing about it was, is there was this, um, he had this gigantic gigantic uh chip on his shoulder from um being uh from boston you know be, uh, baltimore. Or baltimore yeah from being being from baltimore you know uh y- y- you know uh he just kind of like didn't want to play you know with the other kids in the lot which i think that had it been anybody but john waters uh i would have knocked him out you know, <laughs> right, but it being John Waters, well, he has that personality. Just, yeah, it just tickles the hell out of you, you know. And he's a little guy. I mean, ego. he's he a little yeah. ego. Oh yeah, he he he's he's an ego, but he's also just testing the waters. All you know, he's he's like he's poking. Yeah, he likes you know, to fuck with people. Yeah, he, he totally yeah. does. I mean, he just he just always poking at you, and you can tell that you know he doesn't mean it at all. But we're we're sitting there in the middle of the meeting and uh, uh, on hairspray and it's going around and around, and finally. And and he looks over at uh, Jerry Olson, who was uh, acting as a, a producer on on, uh, uh, on on putting together. He he worked a lot with the crews and pulled together some of those great crews that I was talking about. A lot of those people that got hired, including myself, were brought in by Jerry Olson. And Jerry Olson was sitting in this meeting, and Jerry Olson had um, he had a uh, neat hair. He always had this just, <laughs> and, and it was very uh, slick back. You know, uh, it, it was uh, like one of those duck haircuts, or what, what do they call those? Kind of that, <laughs> you, you know. <laughs> in, 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 in it like was fifties style. It was kind of a fifties style thing. It was. It was a little bit longer than that, so that it was a little bit um, kind of stylish. But it was out of step with everybody else, and and you could tell that there was a lot of product going on, and um, all of a sudden, just in, in the middle, just in the middle of a conversation that was like completely going the other way he just turns to jerry and he goes jerry he goes so what's what's with your hair is that like a dupont thing <laughs> is there like is is that a is there a, a a like a chemical thing happening there that 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 makes it do that and 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 i yeah. Poor Jerry, because it just hit him kind of in a stumbly way. You know, <laughs> it, it, it's like the one thing that you don't want to be ever in Hollywood is, is, is uh, 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 yeah, uh, yeah, right. You know, that's, that's unforgivable in Hollywood. You know, you've got to have an answer for everything. Yeah, I mean, if you don't have an answer, you've got to be smart ass about it and turn around and, and, you know, you got to lay balls on the table, boy. So Mr. Waters is probably like giggling inside, like right, right. He was giggling on the outside. Are you kidding? <laughs> right. Um, and, and I just felt tor- uh, horrible for Jerry because, uh, uh, you know, he was uh, he was uh, up against it, and he just didn't um, he just didn't know what to say. And, and John kept going at him and kept going at him. And I was like, wow, I I wouldn't want to be, <laughs> I wouldn't want to be. <laughs> 
that, you know, I was doing everything I could. Let's let's face it. I was like everybody else at the table was doing everything I could not to be recognized or seen as a human being. So <laughs> I feel like if it was me, I would have had to come back for him, because like, he has a certain sense of style too. Look, ninety nine. I would have made fun of his look, mustache, look. <laughs> dude. Dude, I mean, it, yeah. But it, at the same but, time, if but, I was there with John Waters, maybe I wouldn't have. I probably have the same reaction. Oh, well, well, well. well, he. That's the problem. The problem <laughs> is, is that that you're a little bit in awe of him, and 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 at the same time, it came completely out of the blue. I mean, you know, it he was, was thinking like, about one thing, and then all of a sudden, boom, boom, and he just pulled the trigger, <laughs> and I was like, wow, yeah, it's like it was. It, you know, he could have. Uh, he couldn't have gotten more of a reaction if he'd pull out a gun and shot somebody at the table. It was uh, right. <laughs> it, it, it was one of those things. It was uh, pretty hard not to laugh. Um, oh, poor Jerry. He was, yeah, and Jerry's a good friend of mine. You know, there's, I, I would like to bring Jerry on, talk sometime about all the amazing things that he was, uh, that he was uh, privy to. I think we should do that. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So, anyway, that's. Um, I feel like we're going to have a. Uh, landslide like after your, your after your book comes out and everything we're gonna have a landslide of guest speakers on our show or yeah not, guests, I, not speakers guests on our show i have a lot of people that uh that want want to do I, I think it, i think the way we've been doing it is really fun yeah like, I, I think yes if we can uh, get them know, to do have, something have fun have with us do, instead do, of just yeah, a regular do, interview yeah do a, re, a, yeah. a review for some reason the review thing really that's a that's good that's on you i think we're on to something that's on you yeah, yeah, we're onto something yeah, here. So hopefully nobody else steals our idea. Yeah. Like some like rich <laughs> person in Hollywood that has uh, more money than we do. You know. Which would be absolutely anybody everybody. in Hollywood. <laughs> yes. Yes. Maybe every not even in Hollywood. Is, I mean. Yeah, I I was gonna <laughs> <laughs> I was gonna say Pacoopsie is uh <laughs> is probably above us as far as that's concerned. Oh well. So um well there you go. I think that that's um That's good, yeah. I think that we drove that sucker into the ground. That's a wrap for sure. A rap. That's a rap. <laughs> This is Kurt Thomas along with Mick Strong. Thank you for listening to the Dream Warrior Review. If you have any questions or just have feedback for our show, we welcome them at dreamwarriorreview at gmail.com. Of course, you can find us on Facebook and Twitter as well. As always, please follow us and tell your friends about us too. See you next time. Yeah, it's always